so last week we have discussed some uh, pointers uh, we discussed what is net witness uh, what is the architecture what are the components what is the data flow deployment scenarios we have discussed about the deployment types like uh, hybrid deployment standalone deployment so that's the deployment scenarios virtual on prem and physical appliances all those comes under this uh, category data sources we have discussed how data flows which data consume from where the collector consumes from the event source decoder consumes from log collector concentrator consumes from decoder archiver consumes from concentrator so whichever device are consuming it those those call as data sources and uh, user interface we have seen and uh, we have seen admin module what all the tabs are available there so these part has been covered already so if you have any think uh, any doubts around these uh, uh, topics or uh, sessions you can let me know so today we will be what? proceeding with okay today we will be proceeding, proceeding with these uh, topics now okay uh, the service configuration uh, how to configure services how to configure live services i may not be able to do it because we don't have the internet connectivity on this supplies particularly so but i'll show you i think we have discussed last session also how to configure that and what are the where are the options we can go and uh, check uh, and download the packages configuring the event stream analysis where uh, we create the rules we create the rule, use cases you know to fire the alert or the incident incident management same thing incident rules we have to create which i will uh, let you know reporting engine archiver this is the again the same thing uh, i think we should delete this context hub actually what is mean by context hub because uh, every day we are getting the one alarm a uh, context hub server is on unhealthy state like this daily we are uh, this alarm is triggering what is this which one this one context yeah context hub server context hub basically kind of a service uh, which you know uh, uh, gives you the uh, uh, real time data uh, kind of uh, say data it gets syncs the data to the uh, rsa portal or threat uh, repository where it gives you the threat uh, kind of uh, whatever incident data data you getting it it gives the scoring or the rating critical alerts main normal alert low severity alerts so is this this is the only thing if your device is connected to the internet that's when it will be able to work function properly if it device not connected to the internet not able to reach to the live servers of the rsa so it not be able to give you the proper service maybe that's why you are getting that uh, alert service is configured but your system your, your appliance is not connected to the internet not able to reach to the uh, portal so i'm guessing that kind of a thing is there okay and data privacy we we have discussed in first class about the log box so that is the thing which is uh, comes on the data privacy where we provide our input for our passwords and id passwords so that uh, data can be encrypted and then will forward to the upper level of devices like log decoder concentrator and all so uh, configuration is one part is a major aspect we'll co cover today and uh, this thing will cover i think tomorrow and these things we have some of some of the parts we have discussed we have discussed what is metadata what is meta key but meta group and all these raw events these should be configured i'll we'll discuss this later on maybe tomorrow we will try to cover this up and also one more add on i have i am trying to do it today i'm trying to uh, show you the how to install a fresh uh, deployment if you have to because as admin or as l3 uh, guy uh, it's was a responsibility uh, when, whenever uh, people you know say that we need some to increase our infrastructure so whatever devices we have we want to increase that numbers so let's say they ask you to deploy a new machine or new setup so how to install a fresh machine so here uh, you mentioned the uh, reporting engine right uh, that, what is that a reporting engine that is a ss server actual engine right 
RC engine no. or some uh, other thing? Reporting engine basically um, a service which lies under the SA server. Okay. So, which is responsible for creating the alerts, normal alerts, health alerts, and uh, kind of reports, whatever you prepare, reports, charts, dashboards. So those are the things which is hap- happening, which is happened due to the reporting engine service. If service okay, is down, okay, okay. Re- you not be able to create reporting. a report. Yes, okay, all the reporting okay. part taken care by them. Okay, okay. Yeah. So let me just check if. So default ID password for this appliance is root and netwitness. Okay, let me just check if UI is available or not. Hmm. Yes. Admin netwitness. CLI is root and UI is admin. Okay. Okay. So this is a very common error. Whenever uh, you try to log in, so most of the time you get this thing and service unavailable HTTP error. So why is happening it? Because in the background, the this is the service jetty service this is service which is responsible to give you the ui so here okay. uh, so uh, this service is down maybe uh, if you you know st- start your machine i just i just started it a few minutes ago so sometime it takes uh, 10 15 minutes to get, get this ui because the service is getting you know up in the background so we do one thing we can check the service now if the service is up or now So the command would be service chatty status. So here it says it started already 60 minutes ago. Since this is a virtual uh, deployment and though it's no licensed one, so sometime it takes more, more time, I mean longer duration also to give the UI. So should we wait some more time, try to refresh it, we close the browser and, and try restarting the service. And uh, you have, do you happen to set up a lab in your laptop by any chance? Uh, no, actually tomorrow only uh, to, to uh, plan. Okay, okay. So last time we discussed about the uh, VMware uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all those points are clear? Yes. yes. Okay, great. So we'll wait for some more time. Let's see if uh, it gives the uh, service uh, status or else. We'll take a CLI from here, M remote, FC server. Okay. You can try to check the logs. This is the log directory for uh, um, this appliance. Whatever device you are trying to uh, take a search on and trying to check the logs to find the uh, recent errors, this is the directory for all. Maybe ESA, collector, decoder, all any device. Okay. Tail of. Yes. Tail of means the recent logs, the new, uh, new logs. Yeah. All these are new ones. Okay, okay. But if you want to read all logs, you can just simply do cat. So just try to see if any errors or some failures you can find here. What about this? Let me just check again the status. Okay, started one minute ago. Let's see if now we can get the access of this uh, portal. Okay, this time it's it gives me the uh, UI, right? So this is the default landing page we come across, and these are the dashlets. All these uh, dashlet, uh, the entire page called dashboard. And we have a different dashlets here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six dashlet are there, which each can be configured. Okay, can be changed or can be you know uh, modified. And here we have some default. Uh, what do you say? Dashboards. 
if you want to see any of these you can simply select and uh, no, uh, try to uh, find it okay so i have set up some time back but devices are not up actually yeah, what is up. the latest version a uh, latest version i think 12.2 uh, was about to come or maybe have released i not sure uh, but they are it's, it's kind of latest version 12.2 actually here there is a plan for you to upgrade the version from 11.7 to 12.1.0 uh-huh so do you have any poe for that uh, for this kind of activities for upgrade uh, regarding uh, activities uh, yeah uh, version upgrade activity hmm. i don't have any physical documents for this but yes i can uh, show you the way how can we upgrade there are two ways one is the ui method but for mm. this uh, you need to have the internet connectivity to your uh, uh, appliance so that it can reach to the server and download the updates and second one okay. is the offline upgrade so offline upgrade means the via cli so you have to download the uh, package uh, okay. from the uh, sa portal and uh, then you have to upload it to the ssa server and then from there there's a com certain commands which you can use to upgrade okay okay so i'll show you the uh, uh, second uh, method because uh, your system is so we can go for the second uh, option i'll show you that how to upgrade offline okay okay so i have started my hybrid box my log collector and my isa service also so that we can see the configurations first we need to do in the sa server right yes so hierarchy for the upgrade if you talk about uh, only sa server comes first then uh, isa server and then uh, hybrid uh, or maybe decoder or maybe consultator in any order we can do it but sa server okay. and isa server are the uh, top priorities those has to be done first and then rest of the appliances okay okay And there's a reason behind it because uh, uh, the server is the head server. You know, it gives the uh, connection connectivity to all the appliances. Uh, so basically, when we uh, install uh, all these appliances, these are the address of the SSA server, so that they can connect to the SSA server and get the encrypted certificate, and then start their own services. So it works as a centralized certificate authority. So that's why it needs to be installed first. okay okay we'll move for, uh, forward so you got it right this is dashboard and this is uh, these all are we can see as a uh, dashlets if you want to change anything you can have a gear option here click on this gear option click on column 1 add two more columns add two more columns whatever you uh, way you want you can do it or you want to add a row you can also add a row so that's how we can work 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 lot of dashlets are there now so here you can uh, uh, do the changes and now since you are a admin you have all the rights but the analysts who are working uh, uh, in your team they don't have com complete rights to see all these options so options are limited for them so all these dashboards also limited if you want to show them the uh, way i mean you want to share uh, these uh, dashboards only to the analyst you can uh, click on this and can share since i don't don't have any so it's giving me error but this way you can share so only this dashboard will be visible to all the analysts okay. but i think that's kind of that comes under the role uh, role based access that's a different topic but i just give you the heads up So, okay so uh, we discussed the admin tab last time i guess services event sources all these has been uh, uh, we have seen now we go about the security so as the admin the first uh, kra would be this uh, you know kind of checking the users their roles you know the settings if this account is locked or unlocked or if you want to create a new account to them so this is the uh me first thing which you should know 
so you have to come to the uh, console admin come to the security and then you'll be getting these options and in here you can see sub uh, tabs users roles external group mapping settings and the login banner so i'll discuss uh, each one first comes to this is users so as a user this is the option plus sign if you want to create a new user click here username email address and give them a default password and let's say uh, if you want them to set their own password or first login so check this option here so it forced the password change on next login whenever user will log in first time with your password he can he'll be asking to change a password again okay and if you want that only your password should be work for them they don't won't be able to change it uncheck this simple okay. so these a username i this should be given let's say abc abc at abc.com password should be test at eight one two three test at eight one two three now, if you want to give them a name of the employees, the full name, so that you can identify. And any description, like he's uh, from um, third floor, you know, um, aid wing, analyst role, or analyst uh, cabin. Any any identical information you can, if, if you want, you can give it. So they can, you can know that which user is this. So for okay. your identity, identification purpose, you can do it. Now, you have to define roles. So role based base access are back this comes in the picture here so these are the default roles which has been created by rsc itself which has admin analyst data privacy manager and malware analysts operators respond administrators SOC managers and ueba analysts so all these uh, roles have different different uh, kind of um, uh, permissions aligned to them so we can see here you come to attributes you can click and we can see the default times if you want you can configure the you know these things also but these should be def uh, kept at default as a for best practice we should not do any changes here but if you want we can do it let's say we want to make a change to uh, limit the user to see only 50,000 sessions on a single query so only those much of data will be available you will not be able to see complete data in the under investigate tab okay so let's see under investigate so you can see uh, this is investigate tab so here okay. uh, by default uh, 10,000 sessions are available but if you want to limit to 10,000 to 5,000 or 50,000 anything you can make changes where here you can make changes role whichever group you have made uh, a part of will be able to assign these policies only okay. but we should not do any changes here this should be kept as blank or default main thing is here okay, okay. let's say you have selected the analyst click on any of the role which you think of it should be aligned and add and now if you want to check check the permission like what all permissions this uh, group should have because I'm adding this user user ABC to this group so I want to know which uh, what all of all the permissions it has so I should aware in future if I come across any incident I should be aware that this user has some uh, permissions whichever he can do so again click on this show all permissions tab okay so here you can see all the permissions are available for all the modules this is the uh configure manage configuration manage logs manage security manage all these things this user can do and on admin server he can perform all these tasks he can read he can manage uh, the processes he can read metrics or health and wellness he can check logs health logs all those things and for admin part he only have certain permissions he can access admin module admin module means uh, this one this admin section all these tabs will be available for him he can access health and wellness 
so this one also can be accessible health and wellness tab and updates he cannot do he cannot manage email he cannot do auditing he cannot do anything now he can manage plugins he can manage system settings only health and wellness stat browser view unified so basically all these are different different services or categories where he can perform certain activities okay, okay. so these all you can go one by one and uh, when you set up a lab or if you uh, need a practical session we can uh, give you the access okay, okay. you can okay, okay. do it go through one by one okay. so basically you should know where to assign the roles where to change the roles and where to create a user okay, right. okay. got it so this is simple uh, in, uh, detail where you can create a user now let's say this is the user which is uh, not able to log in or he is getting lock out option so it means either this user will not is not enabled or is logged because he tried logging for three times incorrect passwords and the user account got locked so he'll come to you that as an admin he will come to you and now you have to check so you have to ask him a username or password oh, sorry a username only and log into your using your password and check how we can integrate the ad server here yes i'll uh, let you know that that as well so now we are talking about the both the users ad on and the local so process okay. is sim similar but the only thing okay. is uh, groups which we have seen admin analyze and all all those things those should be mapped to the ad also same way the way is mentioned here all the roles these are the roles okay so these roles should be mentioned same as mentioned here to the ad server Okay. So that it can be, uh, you know, uh, mapped. If you make any change yeah, here, yeah. I got, got it. Obviously, you do not be able to map it. So that's the way. Okay. So first, you have to check the user is enabled or not. If it's enabled, that's fine. If it's disabled, we can click on uh, enable again. It is enabled again. Or let's say it is enabled. In this scenario, this is enabled, but it can be locked. So click on unlock. If you click on unlock. It will be unlocked automatically and now you can ask the user to log try to login again so this this is the day-to-day -day activities which comes on a regular basis okay and if you want to change what is the external group mapping ad yeah yeah that's for ad so here uh, uh, pam authentication or ad authentication if you want to apply you uh, you have to come uh, to this section and now you can uh, do it but since i do not have this uh, enabled so I cannot do anything, but in normal in your system, if you go, you can check the these details. Nothing have to, you don't okay. have to do anything. Just have to uh, ad certificate or whatever certificate is mentioned there or keys. There must be some option. I'm not able to recall it. Those have to be mentioned here, and then these uh, roles should be mentioned there. And once it's sync, so I think ad guy uh, will be able to uh, run some commands from there and. Uh, which uh, they use for uh, to create a forest you know to then create a users and then create uh, map it with your uh, roles so those are their activities from our end only we have to add the certificate which is given by the uh, ad team and then done that's all okay, okay. only okay, okay. You know, kind of smaller uh, configuration we have to do from our end okay, okay. got it and there are some settings if you want you can make it uh, yeah, yeah you can leave it uh, you can leave it in the sections and this is again uh, if you have uh, some certificates available in your internal certificates you can okay. uh, uh, upload it so that the certificates uh, you can check from you know certificate valid till they valid till 2023 yeah, yeah. it's getting expired so you generate a new one upload it and that done and let's say if you want uh, any user like when you log in he get these icons on his uh, these lines on his uh, first page as he logs in so just okay. enable this okay. and save so okay. whenever he log in he'll get this up this prompt first okay okay so this is the security tab has been uh, uh, done now the system tab is there uh it also have a uh, same uh, similar information about the system you can see version you can see build you can see license server id which we don't have because we don't licensed user 
check the updates automatically if your system is connected to the internet we can click this option and apply so it will you know uh, check it will start pulling the rss uh, servers whenever new updates comes in it's it give you the information on your service panel here so service okay. panel basically so now you can see the version so yeah. beside this version we'll be getting a new uh, another tab also which is uh, updated version available okay so you can okay, simply okay. click on that more precisely i would say here so you can see update version mm -hmm. my current version and my update version if you want to update this you can simply update and now uh, i don't have any connection is it live cms server is not configured so first i okay, have to okay. uh, connect my appliance to internet then i have to so uh, when we check uh, yeah when we check the check for updates uh, it's only checking the updates are available or not or automatically updates will be updated no automatically it's not happen anything you have to update by yourself mm -hmm. manually <clears throat> it will give you the suggestions okay. let's say 12.1 okay. is uh, coming in so your current version is this and here it will mention 12.1 update version mm -hmm. so it's up okay. to you now if you want you can okay. select that appliance click on update and update host okay so by okay. this way you can upgrade it but this option will work only when you have to you know we have internet connection first say a condition yeah yeah, and yeah second would be uh the access server needs to be upgraded offline via cli method okay. because here you can upgrade all the services but you cannot cannot update the ss server from this uh, option though they are giving the option to do it but it should not be recommended because sometime it has almost okay, 12 okay, services it, okay. so whatever See, available uh, got okay. failed. Hmm. yeah whatever available in this the esa hybrid lock characters only it's available under the host options yes is yes server is not available here am i right no ss server will be available Are but you yeah, yeah. should not upgrade it Okay, as okay, a best okay. practices you should not upgrade as a server from the ui you should always go via cli method offline method okay 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 and rest once of it upgraded, then only yeah 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 once it uh, yeah. SSR upgraded then only we will come to the ui ui then we will update it further exactly okay okay, okay. and now we can see licensing part so licensing part is mentioned here throughput license or it don't have anything it has a appliance based license a standard license for all no changes you can see the data ingestion from past one month we want you can export the data, data usage reassign to another license reclaim a lot of options are there so mine is already been expired a long back still i'm using it appliance server Appliance license means normally the hybrid only is, uh, will be appliance, am I right? Yeah, hybrid, dog decoder, lock collector, all these are appliances. Lock or collector rather, also. I can say services. Yeah. So we have physical lock collector also. Okay. So all the services are available as a physical mode. It means uh, the RSA appliances or virtual. In virtual they what only give you the iso uh, image yeah what about the sa server it will be available on the uh, software or hardware also sa server uh, as a best practices uh, it is always suggested that we should buy uh, uh, hardware also from the rsa itself mm. uh, because uh, uh, they do the customizations uh, as per their uh, you know kind of uh, standard so always is good to use and other appliances can be used as a software also software enemies own vm based virtual uh, machines yeah yeah, yeah. but the okay. server has multiple services so it is always suggested to use the rsc server physical uh, box which is given by the okay, rsc only okay we okay. are asking here we are using the lock hybrid and the packet hybrid both we are using it both are appliances only but apart from collectors uh, we are using the uh, it's running on the vm only so then after archive also is a uh, plain so i think uh, that is uh, totally mm -hmm. different uh, that is running on the storage server not appliance 
but i'm mm. not sure about the the ss server uh, maybe it's it also running on the i'm not sure about it what uh, the ss server and but you suggested it will uh, this one also will be available in the hardware hardware yes. appliance am i right yes correct okay for and example if like have, uh, if you have a hybrid example, as a physical appliance so ss server also would be hybrid i mean the physical i'm guessing okay in the single appliance basis in the same appliance uh, shall we run the all the services in this uh, as a stand alone is it possible yeah definitely but that okay, will be okay. most costly okay okay got it got it because cost wise if you go it will be costly most companies will not go with that they only go with that okay. if they have a very high uh, usage or high eps rate Let's say one lag yeah, 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 yeah. EPS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I got it. I got it. Right. So for licensing, setting, for, for the mm -hmm. licensing perspective, anything we need to manually we need to update it. Yes, if it's guessing getting expired, then there are two options. Yes. If you have the internet connectivity again, so you can do it online, mm. or maybe it keep uh, po poking you if your appliance is getting expired. So you can do it online also. But if you don't have a internet connectivity. So in that scenario, yeah. you have to uh, download. You can talk to support first. Open a case with them. They'll give you the yeah. new license file. Download the license file from their portal, whichever link they have given, and upload to your yeah. server. And then you'll be able to do it. That's how it's kind of tedious some uh, process, but yeah, that's the only process we have for offline uh, users. Users. Okay. Uh, actually, I have a general question. If anyway the device is having the internet connectivity, but whenever we are doing the version upgrade, so we need to download the package from the RSA. So the size is very huge. Okay. Mm -hmm. In case we will have the internet connectivity, it may be the some uh, some internet fluctuation may be there. At the time, our file will be correct. Corrupted file, mm -hmm. we, we will get it or uh, the downloading will be failed mm -hmm. so what is the best mechanism so, uh, we can use it uh, see best mechanism is always uh, to download the package and do it offline okay because if you do from here uh, mm. this option so let's say if your connectivity gets you know a break for some time so mm. this mm. process current upgrade which is going on it will be hampered and once it will hampered your services will be down or maybe get corrupted and once it got okay. corrupted so in that scenario only redeployment is a last option or reimaging last option that's it which is going to be take a lot of time a lot of efforts and so, so you may yeah yeah, up, yeah. Uh, yeah and yeah. one more thing so first initially we will go to the offline method download the file and uh, we'll go to the offline method for the sa server uh, upgrade uh, right. Apart from, we have the another appliance uh, like ESA mm -hmm. servers. Mm -hmm. Actually, ESA is running on the same ESA server only, right? Or no, that is that, that is a different uh, appliance altogether. Yeah. Okay. So as usual, it's already integrated. Once they upgrade yeah. the ESA server, just to go to the, we go to the uh, services. Uh, sorry, hosts, host tab. Mm -hmm. Then one by one we will uh, do the upgrade. Okay. Exactly. Okay, server will be push, pushing that uh, uh, upgrades on your behalf. Okay, okay. Any other doubt you have apart uh, in that scenario? Yeah, yeah, that's all. That, that's all. That's uh, all. Okay. So in and this is the uh, tab which comes as an email server. If you want to enable email service so that alerts can be generated automatically and get you know uh, transferred to the uh, recipient email addresses. So here you can do configurations. Maybe uh, you can configure mail server basically. Give it address, port number, and the from email address from where you should get the alert, mm. and then notification okay. if anything is there. And do test connection. Okay. And rest all are not much in use. Investigations, so we can limit the uh, metadata or meta values scanned. By default is 10,000. You can make it to any of the numbers which you were you want. Cloud gateway, nothing. We don't use it now. 
and NTP server. So NTP configuration you have to do it here. Give the number server name or IP, add it, and apply. Okay. If you have any proxy servers, let's say if you want your connection to be processed by a proxy proxy instead of growing a regular internet connection, you can configure that proxy server it is and attach connection and apply. That's also it okay. gives you the benefit. Okay. So the system tab is these are the only two, three main tasks which you can you know think of while uh, as admin. Yeah, can you uh, Felton will uh, monitoring? Yeah, so under health, each tab we have multiple sub tabs. Okay, so okay, if you go okay. to health and wellness, you can find uh, these uh, different tabs the alarms, which gives you the alarm details, monitoring. So here we can see monitoring of the each appliances or each host. We can see stop services and you know, stop processing physical okay. supply problems. So all these things can be seen here. So basically it's kind of an analyst level thing but yeah as an admin you should also aware about this and this is the policy i think we have discussed in last class also if you want to make any policy so how to add uh, users or maybe the appliances here you can make a group of the appliances let's say last time we did uh, this way so i made this uh, lock collector group oh, okay 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 so if you want to apply okay. a policy on these two devices, so I can mm -hmm. create a policy. I can uh, see if I, I need to change anything. If condition is fine for us, we can go proceed with the same one or else if we can click and make changes. Okay. You can give the alarm error. If uh, error is for two minutes, it means it gives the alert. So this should be available working partially working this condition should be available for zero minute then we should get the alert okay. so like the way we can do r d and we can define our own availability whatever client says uh, we can define the threshold as per his uh, time the same error only we are getting in our infra oracle oh sorry overall processing status indicator process info partially working yes the same only so we are getting we, daily basis so if you can see here it means that uh, the server maybe is in a critical state or a fatal state or is not running at all anything could be possibility so first you should check the services whether it's no, no, a we, are, we, we are restarting after restarting the service also again and again it will become this alert actually even today also it, it, it's coming then you have to check Maybe there might be some uh, uh, wrong is going on with the server. Because suggestions also you can see RSA itself. Okay. And the last option you can go for the logs, var log messages. There's the uh, direction or the location where you can find all the errors. Okay. Okay. First, the uh, first is try to reach our service. If nothing is happening mm. yet, then monitor logs. See, this is also saying, saying same thing. And basis okay. of the logs, if you find any uh, errors or uh, any alerts or something, then we can proceed as per the scenario. Okay, okay. So all these are default appliances uh, which are available in the infrastructure. You can simply click on this and uh, create the policies. And which has different policies for different appliance as per the uh, uh, default uh, uh, no uh, template. So, so most we should of the go policies for different... are default, default only, yes. right? Yes. If you okay. want, you can create your own policy from here. Click on this. Select any of the device for which you want to create a policy. Let's say I, have, I okay. want to create this one. Uh, A, B, C. So now, under consultator, A, B, C is added. Now I have to enable this service. Uh, sorry, this this uh, policy. I have to create the rules or the conditions and threshold. Okay, okay. And I have to add the devices here. Which device I want to this policy to be applied on. That's all. Okay. 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 I can delete from this option. If you want to copy any policy, you can uh, click this and click copy. 
so we don't want to make any uh, only small changes not entire changes so copy and what let's say you want to make change this only zero zero to one so it why will um, no need to change entire thing just copy it and okay. make it simple so you can save a time okay and okay. one more option um, if you want to collapse all the groups in the same time this is the option so each group we don't uh, have go to, to go one by one and go to monitoring tab next some hmm. policies yeah okay this one okay okay system starts browser means nothing but checking the logs am i right uh system start the browser logs. is the is gives you the detail of the different drives and different uh, mount points and what is the usage hmm. for that so like in okay, the, uh, linux okay. we do top so top is the command which gives you the uh, usage of cpu memory and high processes so similar uh, on the ui format you can give the usage of okay. size available so uh, you know. okay so we can uh, even source monitoring is available under the health and wellness only huh? yeah exactly in this is the main okay. tab this is sub tab go to event source monitoring event source monitoring here so in the normal okay. uh, 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 versions this is the grayed out because it's not available they have given this option to event sources so event sources is similar to this one which you have been seen so this is the option where you can come and check the details but under health and wellness event source monitoring this is the i think absolute now i have uh, 11.3 version so on coming mm -hmm. I mean, no, near versions is already been obsolete okay go to settings here also even source monitoring hmm. so here you can define the rules let's say if your okay, device okay. has not been uh, not been reporting from last five minutes you want that to be mm -hmm. alerted so uh, configure the rule and click on the syslog notification or whatever you, way you want to be notified you can simply click on that and apply mm -hmm. Will give you okay, keep okay. giving you the alert okay can you please go to the event sources here no no, no not here in major tab okay. yeah hmm. here here in this particular in the first ip uh i can see the 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 last uh, event source types the rating is the for the single ip i can see the uh multiple things so for example uh, the first uh, win event nic exchange all the things mm -hmm. so uh, i need to ma map any one of the things right yes you can check that the raw logs mm. and by checking the raw logs you can define which uh, logs uh, this device is producing uh, you know let's say found exchange servers in the logs so it means it's coming from exchange servers so it should map it manually to the exchange server mm. So SFTP agent is coming in. So this is the IP. So first we can check the IP itself, which IP this device belongs to. If this is mm. the uh, SFTP server or exchange server, so we get the idea. In the CMDB, we can put the IP and can check. Yeah, actually That's this the is the main way. issue here. Actually this is the main issue in our infra. Here there is no mapping is done. Okay. So my concern is, uh, so really the mapping is required or not? mapping in a sense in the cmdb or in the this net witness server no 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 net witness in the endpoints uh, sources the acknowledgement uh, and the mapping option is there right so mm -hmm. this is are mandatory or not for each and every uh assets no this is mandatory only, only when it's getting parts wrongly okay 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 yeah that is a confusion okay. here or there is two actually main thing is your ultimate target is all the things are parsing correctly or not that is our major concern and also here there is no mapping is done here that's what i am asking this question go to manage option when whenever we are putting any ip in this filter i can see the five different uh, event source type will be there routers oracle all the things and you are also checking this the days also how many uh, idle time yeah 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 most of the things are very uh, old uh, timing uh, very few or uh -huh. one or two only is uh, uh, 
a latest timing within one hour so it means whatever latest is coming in those are the real ones these are these should be removed should not be available in the system so you can select these two or uh, mm. multiple things and delete it simple because why this happened because uh, i think this discuss will uh, um, in the previous session also when the new deployments happen in new deployments mm. the, what the people do they try to integrate the servers to get the logs and most of the time okay. they have some custom servers or maybe some other server which are not able to parse properly so mm. whatever wrong is been passed those entries are getting added here for example if okay. we have added, uh, integrated linux server so the linux server is having the syslog as a sending protocol so all okay. these servers are using the linux thing all these are parsers are enabled on the decoder by default okay so the same thing same linux protocol same linux server logs are getting parsed with the firepower with uh, cross beam from aix win event ms exchange so it getting parsed with all the parsers but once okay. it's been identified and people have rectified it so now they have been rectified to some uh, the exact server which is it should be available so sftp and juno's router let's say these are the two correct ones and now these all are wrong ones so 8 39 days and lot of uh, so in that scenario it should all come in this page select all except those which have uh, the recent data available and simply remove all these okay so now i have a lot of things so maybe uh, 16 okay so whenever we are removing the all hmm it can take some minutes also to process so we can uh, do the reload and let's see if it's uh, still there yep so now all those has been removed so now i only have the recent ones my job is easy now i can do something okay. else okay because it's not get deleted automatically it, it gets stored in the uh, system or the disk okay okay got it required when wrong wrong parsing is happening so in this scenario also let's uh, which we had discussed all these comebacks coming in so what people had mm. done they either have modified the parser a basic basis of the logs or they have forced the logs to be parts to that particular mm. parser so once the parts parsing has been corrected okay they said is fine uh, my dog job is done i'm getting real time logs it's getting parts correctly they forget they don't delete previous uh, backlogs so now it's come to you so you have to do it don't do that mistake so that's happened in the real time when new deployment gets installed i think we discussed last session okay so here so by default all these are enabled all right and mm. most of the things are the syslog so if um, my uh, linux is syslog if i enable that so it may possible that it may get parts with this with this with this so system my rsa uh, the decoder is kind of a very keen to adapt the logs and get it passed very quickly so it cannot okay. uh, define the kind of uh, uh, segregation like which device it is most of the time if all the parts are enabled it get confused so that's that's why it happened okay. so that's a best practice you should only enable that parser which is required for that device if you are in, uh, uh, integrating the linux server you should disable all these parsers only find the linux one or maybe uh, kind of uh, let's say cef cisco asa let's say so only enable asa and delete all of these uncheck 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 and apply so it means it only getting parsed with asa and you know this is the asa device so parsing will be perfectly fine so here it will not be getting any backlogs only getting the real time thing because whatever you your device is you parsing the same way the same parser is enabled okay so, so for example you should do hmm. for example there is a one server windows server in this particular server so antivirus a software turn micro software manager is running on it okay mm-hmm. so in their particular log in their particular ip we can get the the windows os logs 
as well as trend micro logs the entire trend micro uh, application logs as well as any oracle java java based logs all the logs are coming here so mm -hmm. in the discovery phase in the discovery i can see the single ips uh, mapping of the multiple IP, uh, multiple source type it will provide the, the same it's a uh, one is uh, uh, windows another one is run micro another one is oracle java mm -hmm. so at that time at that time the mapping won't work right if you map any uh, particular ip the another logs won't won't coming am i right or wrong no, you are right it happens so that means so we won't do any mapping here am i right whatever no. the, whenever we are doing the ip it's automatically getting the all the logs whatever the logs are available in that particular ip it's automatically coming mm -hmm. oracle java application specific or os based all the things are coming for example this is a general scenario apart from one or more or more application running on the particular same ip again the another uh, traffic also will become exactly so uh, at the time how the mapping will work so in that scenario mapping uh, will work basis of the uh, logs it can it might possible uh, that it can parse in some other device also which is not uh, supposed to be so you should ask your management which device you want to be passed here because generally from one ip one type of log should be uh, sent as a best practices because one device have one ip and one ip can pass it as, as a one device only you cannot make a one uh, a ip to be passed uh, in multiple sources you want that one ip to be you know uh, passed as a vmware one to be passed as a linux one to be passed as a firewall or router it should not, not work like that way mm. because you not be able to segregate if you if you make a report yeah. If you make yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. top, top yeah, 10 that is uh, a, kind of IPs. Yeah, yeah, that is the main reason. So whenever uh, we are in the discovery phase, go to the discovery. Once it is integrated successfully, it will provide the all kind of the logs. How many mm -hmm. percentage in the Windows uh, logs we are getting? How many percentage we are getting the, the antivirus logs? All the things. Am I right? yes it gives its own suggestion based on the logs but you have to think yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to decide which one should be you know actual uh, data should be passed under yeah 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 that is the main reason i am asking in case we are acknowledgement acknowledged and mapping any one of the specific uh, yes this is a windows machine yes this is a antivirus machine at that time we will lose the, the another type of logs am i right yeah exactly okay. so that's what i'm saying in this scenario you should be well aware yeah. which device it should okay. be so manual okay. popping is, mapping is required when system is making some correct uh, some incorrect uh, decisions but the system okay. is correct you are wrong so you cannot blame system and you cannot do manual mapping you have to you have to decide okay. this device should be windows or linux <laughs> because the only uh, funda is one device cannot be parsed or cannot be you know uh, uh, categorized as a multiple sources it should be one Oh, okay okay actually here the mapping is uh, that means integration is uh, done via based on the ip address or based on the host name based on the host name but ip comes by okay. default in the logs and it identifies okay, okay. that ips and shows you it okay 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 because without okay. ip not be able to reach the data no <laughs> there's the problem yeah yeah go to the endpoint sources you know, tap so if you have are using endpoints then this function will work yeah yeah we are using endpoint endpoint agent mm, yeah so i think uh, this option will be able to see something right here you can create a group next and uh, type us host name or ipv4 so let's say host name equal to give the windows host name on which the event source is this uh, endpoint is installed and mm -hmm. next and 
can also define policies available policies all so this is the new section which has been also uh, uh, been given to the 12.1 version so same thing they have applied to the isa service also so if you are able to see these things in your uh, endpoint section you'll be able to work with 12.1 also this is a major biggest change only nothing else so what uh, for example we are using the 12.1 in the our uh, sa server or endpoint uh, server we are downloading the package from the this server only so the same version of the uh, package only will be installed on the all the endpoint side am i right uh, for the endpoint some really not sure if, whether it works uh, that that way but uh, i'm just guessing it it should work that way i think but the support because i have never worked with endpoints i have never done the upgrade for the work endpoint because people hardly use in this in the market they obviously go with the trend micro or semantech and other endpoints they don't go with the rsa for collection purposes okay okay actually here also so they are re- here uh-huh. also they are using the nw agent or to replace the vinara method uh-huh. that is a major issue is going on actually in the rsa side 12.0 version only supporting the linux collecting the linux logs in uh, uh-huh. till uh, 11.7 linux is not supported linux in the sense syslog you said uh, linux is supported till 12.7 who said who said that because linux are by default supported linux and windows okay ha huh, now oh, it's fine oh, okay uh, we will discuss tomorrow further ha huh, it's fine then now uh, we can close it up we can discuss by tomorrow yeah 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 thank you okay okay yeah thank you thank you